All right. Hello, everyone, trivia players. Um, welcome. I'm going to turn off this whole music now. Um, I appreciate you all joining us. Um, this is one of my favorite things to do at Bookmarks, and I'm really, really excited we get to do an online version of it. Um, it might be a little rickety because this is the first time I've done it, so I will appreciate your uh, patience ahead of time as we, um, you know, figure it out together. Um, first of all, I want to thank you guys so much for all of your support over the past couple weeks. Um, the outpouring of just generosity and kindness has been pretty, pretty amazing. Um, Jamie Southern and I spent pretty much all day processing online orders from the weekend, and we didn't even get through all of the ones that came in over the weekend. So we really, really appreciate you guys. Um, Thank you a lot. Um, so some quick housekeeping before we start. Um, you should have all gotten an email with uh, links to five different Google Forms. Um, if for some reason you didn't get that, I don't know how you're here, but um, in the description below, uh, there's links to those forms as well. Um, so you can have them open in different uh, tabs um, and fill them out either as I'm talking or very quickly at the end. Um, I'm going to try to keep my eye on comments here. I have another screen open. Thank you. Um, and if somebody needs something repeated or whatnot, I will try to do that um, very quickly. And then before I go over um, the answers at the end of each round, Jamie is going to get, I mean, not Jamie, I am going to give a countdown from 10. Um, once we get done with that, Jamie's going to close your ability to submit responses. And then I'll go over answers um, I can't see you, so please don't cheat. Um, it makes it less fun for everybody else. Um, and don't like write answers in the comment box either. You can say stupid things to me all you want. I would, I would really love that. Um, but yeah, don't, don't shout out answers. Um, yeah, so I'll do my best to go slowly, speak clearly. Um, I give hints, uh, hints decrease as the rounds go on. Um, we have a lot of first timers joining us this time, so um, rounds tend to get more difficult as we go, but we start off relatively easy. Um, so let's see if I can switch to my trivia and we will get started. All right, so here we go. So the way book trivia works um, is it is. Uh, five rounds of 10 repeating categories, um, and tonight's rounds are uh, Name That Cover. These are uh, relatively famous uh, books that I've removed the title and the author from. Um, so you just need to give me the title of the book if you know it and the author if you know it. In most of these questions, if I don't mention the author of the book, you'll get an extra point for the author. So if you know the author, always write down the title and the author. Uh, the second category is best sellers. So these are just questions about best selling books. Uh, picture this. So these are questions about children's picture books. Uh, emoji book titles. This is always a lot of fun. Uh, it's like a little picture puzzle made out of emojis. You need to tell me the title of the book and the author if you know it. Uh, I'm ready for my close-up. These are just author photos. You just have to tell me who the author is. It's usually pretty hard, but I'll give you some hints to make it a little easier. Uh, what a cast. So these are just characters from a novel. Uh, you just have to tell me the name of the novel, if you know it. Uh, NFBFF. So these are questions about nonfiction titles. Um, a five-word synopsis. So this is a category I lovingly stole from Jane Mount's uh, bibliophile. So it's just a famous book summed up in five words. You give me the title of the book and the author if you know it. Uh, get Lit. So these are just questions about classic literature. Pretty straightforward. And finally, uh, Literary Before and After. So these are two uh, book titles that share a word in the middle. Uh, they've been smashed together uh, like a wrinkle in time for bed. Um, sometimes I'll sacrifice an article to make it work, um, but it will all become clear as we move on. All right, so heading straight into round one. 
Here we go. So number one, name that cover. So these are two covers of a classic children's book. Uh, it was published originally in 1961. Um, the cover on the left, I guess, for you guys, is the first edition cover, and on the right is a more recent edition. So just looking for the title of the book, if you know it, and the author will get you an extra point as well. So published in 1961, just looking for the title and the author, if you know it. Like I said, we'll, we'll start out pretty easy, and then we'll, we'll get pretty hard, so... Buckle up. All right, uh, number two, best sellers. Set in a North Carolina coastal town, a young woman living in a swamp becomes suspected of murder. This novel has been on the New York Times bestseller list for 81 boink, weeks and is currently at the number one spot. Seems like just about every book club, including Reese Witherspoon's in America, is reading it. This is a very, very popular novel. Um, just need the title of the book, if you know it, and the author, if you know it. Yeah, it's, it was our best-selling book of 2018 and also our best-selling book of uh, 2019. So published in 2018, looking for the title and the author. If I'm going too fast, just let me know, and I can slow down. All right, moving on to maybe number three. Picture this. In this classic children's book from 1955, author Crockett Johnson tells the story of a boy, Harold, who has the power to create the world just by drawing it. Strong utensil does Harold use to draw objects into being? So, a classic uh, kids' book from 1955, starring Harold. What drawing utensil does Harold use to draw objects into being? Think about it. Write it down. Type it down. I guess. All right, moving on to number four, emoji book titles. Uh, someone asked, do I want the title or just the object? Just the object is what I want, um, not, not the title of the book. Um, so what, what does Harold use to draw the world into being? Okay, uh, number four, emoji book titles. Uh, this is a novel published in 1954. Just looking for the title, if you know it, and the author will get you another point. So title and author, if you know it. Okay. All right, I said, we're starting off easy. So here we go, number five. I'm ready for my close-up. Who is this man with his high hairline? He was baptized slash maybe born in uh, 1564 and died around 1616. Just looking for his name. So no extra points here, just need uh, the name of this this man, this bearded, mustachioed man. All right, number six, what a cast. Bill the Lizard, Mock Turtle, Dormouse, Griffin, and March Hare. So these are all characters from an 1865 novel. They're maybe not the most famous characters, but they are some of the characters in this very famous 1865 novel. I'm just looking for the title of the book, if you know it. And as always, the author's name will get you an extra point. 
So Bill the Lizard, Mock Turtle, Dormouse, Griffin, March, Hare. Title and author. All right, number seven, NFBFF, so nonfiction titles. First published in 1988, this work of science writing explores in non-technical terms the structure, origin, development, and eventual fate of the universe. The author and British uh, physicist was one of the greatest minds in the field up until his death in 2018. Despite his best attempts to make astrophysics understandable for lay people, explaining concepts like quarks, time, and space, according to a recent study, only 7% of readers who have started the book will finish it. Uh, despite that, it has sold over 25 million copies. All right, so looking for the title of this uh, science work published in 1988. And the author, one of a uh, very famous astrophysicist, will get you another point as well. So title and author, if you know it. And I am in that 7%. I did not make it all the way through. I was like tracking for about 50% of the book, and then I, I just, just lost me. All right. Moving on to number eight, five-word synopsis. Fireman stops burning books, reads. So Fireman stops burning books, reads. Uh, this is a novel published in 1953. The Fireman Stops Burning Books reads, just looking for the title of the book, and the author will get you another point. Um, and while we're here, I'll mention, uh, for authors in general, um, I mostly am interested in the last name. If you can't quite remember their first name, but you know what their last name is, we will usually give you a point. Um. All right, moving on to number nine. Get lit. All right, this 1890 Gothic and philosophical novel tells the story of a man who sells his soul, ensuring that a newly painted portrait of him, rather than he, will age and fade. His wish is granted, and he pursues a libertine life, staying young and beautiful, all the while his portrait ages and records his every sin. It was the author's only published novel. It's looking for the title of the work and the author, if you know it. Uh, since we're in round one, I am nice. Uh, this author is mostly known for his plays, but this is also a pretty famous work of his as well. So just looking for the title of the novel, if you know it, and the author. All right, and the last question of the first round, literary before and after. E.B. White's 1945 children's classic meets Meg, Joe, Beth, and Amy. So remember, these are two book titles that share a word in the middle. So you just have to puzzle it out and smash them together. Um, and for this title, you, for this round, you only get the point if you get both book titles. There's no half points or anything. Uh, so we're looking for E.B. White's 1945 children's classic meets Meg, Joe, Beth, and Amy. All right. So that is it for round one. Not too bad. Um, I'm gonna switch back to me. Hey, hi. Um, so I'll give you guys a little bit here to submit your answers. Um, I don't, usually round one, I don't need to repeat too much, but I'm happy to go back if you need me to. Um, but yeah, so that's, that's the quiz. There's four more of those rounds. They get increasingly more difficult. Um, I'm not seeing any action 
on the comments here. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and probably start counting down like a meanie. Here we go. Uh, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, and 1. Okay, so that's it. Hopefully you got your answers in. If not, I will go slower. All right, um, we're going to move on to round one answers. Um, I guess we can give people a little more time here. There's a, someone just said, ah, in the comments. All right, so round one answers. Hopefully you got your answers in. If not, too bad. Here we go. Uh, so name that cover. That was uh, two covers of James and the Giant Peach by Roald Dahl. Good job, probably most of you guys. Usually I can see who did well, so this is very weird. Um, uh, yep, name James and the Giant Peach. Uh, bestseller, that was Where the Crawdads Sing by Delia Owens. 81 Weeks and Going Strong. Uh, purple Crayon, Harold uses a purple crayon to draw his world into being. Uh, that was Lord of the Flies by William Golding. Uh, for the emoji, I'm ready for my close-up. That was good old Mr. Bill Shakespeare. Uh, that was some of the characters from Alice's Adventures in Wonderland by Lewis Carroll. Uh, A Brief History of Time by uh, Stephen Hawking was the nonfiction book I was looking for. Uh, that was a five-word synopsis of Fahrenheit 451 by Ray Bradbury. Uh, the novel I was looking for in classic literature was The Picture of Dorian Gray by Oscar Wilde. And literary before and after oops, was uh, Stuart Little Women. Stuart Little Women. Good job, one and all. All right. So... We're going to head straight into round two. Maybe if my computer will cooperate here. Okay, round two. There we go. All right, number one, name that cover. So these are two different uh, paperback editions of a 2000 novel that, as you can see from the image, Won the Pulitzer Prize. Pew, pew, Pulitzer Prize. Okay, so just looking for the title of the book, if you know it, and the author as well. We'll get you another point. So the, these are the two paperback editions of this title, published in 2000. Title and author, if you know it. Okay, moving on to number two, bestsellers. Uh, this latest novel from Commonwealth author tells the story of a brother and sister, Danny and Maeve, over the course of five decades. A book club favorite with an audiobook edition narrated by Tom Hanks. Upon release, this novel became one of the best-selling books of 2019 and is still currently on the New York Times list. So, the Commonwealth author, multi-generational saga, starring Danny and Maeve. Looking for the title of the book and the author as well. Okay, moving on to number three. Picture this. These are just some of the characters created by this modern master of children's picture books. Born in 1968, he has published over 50 books to date. So just looking for uh, the name of the author and illustrator who has created these characters. He's created more. And I think during this whole um, self-quarantine time, he's doing a little doodle every day at lunch. He's a cool dude, I think. So... <laughs> Just looking for his name, if you know it. Let's 
So just the author and illustrator's name, that's all I need. All right, moving on to number four, emoji book titles. So this is a nonfiction work from 2003. It was a National Book Award finalist uh, for nonfiction. And we were uh, lucky enough to host him very recently. So looking for the title of the book, if you know it, and the author's name, if you know it. So published in 2003, and it was a National Book Award finalist that year. Okay, we're going to move on here to question five. I'm ready for my close-up. Uh, so in this image, the kind of the hints are the people he is surrounded by, um, but I'm looking for the name of the man in the middle. Uh, he was born in 1973. He has published uh, three novels to date, and I believe he has another one coming out uh, this fall. So he's surrounded by uh, the actors from the moody movie adaptation of one of his novels. So just looking for his name, if you know it. Born in 1973, three very, very popular novels published. Eight. Just need his name. Okay. We're going to move on to number six. What a cast. We have Nick, and Daisy, and Jay, and Tom. From this 1925 Stone Cold American classic. Nick, Daisy, Jay, and Tom. Published in 1925. Just looking for the title of the book. And the author will get you another point. Nick, Daisy, Jay, and Tom. Okay, number seven, NFBFF. Born in 1961, this American author has written on a variety of subjects, including feminism, the environment, politics, place, and art, in titles like Men Explain Things to Me, A Field Guide to Getting Lost, and Whose Story Is This? Um, so I'm looking for the author's name, but there's another point up for grabs if you can remember the title of her latest book, a memoir that explores how she found her voice as a writer and feminist during the 1980s in San Francisco. So she has published many, many books. Um, some of them are here in the question. So you get a point for the author's name, and you can get another point if you can remember her very recently published uh, memoir. This is just a side tangent, but I had the pleasure of uh, listening to her speak at uh, like a, a book selling conference earlier this year. And she has the most melodic, soothing voice in the world. And I was like sitting in a sunspot and I definitely fell asleep during her talk, but not because it was not good. It was amazing. I was just very tired and in the sun. So name and title of the book, if you know it. And it looks like Jamie is updating some scores there in the comments. Very cool. All right, number eight, five word synopsis. Dust Bowl Joyride Without Joy. Dust Bowl Joyride Without Joy. Uh, so this is a novel published in 1939, a very famous American novel. It won the Pulitzer Prize that year for fiction. It also won the National Book Award for fiction. Man, look at all these people in first place. Goodness. All right, Dust Bowl Joyride Without Joy, published in 1939. 
So looking for the title of the book, if you know it, and the author as well. Okay, we're gonna move on to question nine, get lit. Mary Ann Evans, uh, more well known by her pen name, George Eliot, was one of the leading novelists of the Victorian era. Her 1871 novel, Middlemarch, is widely touted as her best work and one of the best novels of that era and of all time. Uh, but also, between 1859 and 1876, she published six other novels. Can you remember the titles of any of them? Uh, up to two points available. So if you can remember more than two, you don't you can't get three or four points, but just looking for the titles of any other of her novels. And you can get up to two points. So George Eliot in Middlemarch, can you remember any of her other books published between 1859 and 1876? Um, okay, we're going to move on to the last question of round two. Uh, literary before and after. Thomas Paine's 1775 pamphlet arguing for American independence meets... The Dashwood Sisters in this 1811 novel. So remember, two titles that share a word in the middle. Thomas Paine's 1775 pamphlet arguing for American independence meets The Dashwood Sisters in this 1811 novel. Give you guys a few more seconds to puzzle that out. All right, and that is the end of round two. Uh, I'm happy to repeat any questions that need to be repeated. Um, we'll do, can do that really quickly, hopefully. Hopefully I went slow enough that we don't need to repeat anything. And you're all just so smart and you know everything all the time. Um, okay, we'll go back to the author close-up. It looks like we have a request for that. Close-up and number seven, okay. We'll do the close-up first. Um, so the author here is in the middle of the picture, um, and he's kind of surrounded by hints. And the hint is uh, these are all members of the cast of... Uh, the adaptation of one of his novels that was very, very popular. You know, I believe the movie came out in 2018. So just looking for the author's name, if you know it. And number seven. Oh, sorry, someone said number two. Sorry, we'll just try to do this fast. Um, so this is the latest novel from the same author who published Commonwealth, another multi-generational family saga. Just looking for the title of the book, if you know it, and the author's name. Mm. And we're going to move to number seven now. Um... So this is a uh, pretty, I think I would say a, fa a fairly well-known uh, writer. She's written on a ton and ton of subjects. Um, these are some of the titles of her books. Men Explain Things to Me, A Field Guide to Getting Lost. Whose story is this? Um, so just looking for her name, if you can remember it. Uh, and the title of her latest memoir that came out a couple weeks, a few weeks ago, maybe. Okay. So in the interest of keeping things moving, we're going to keep moving. Um, so I'll give you all from the count of 10 to get your answers in, and then we will move on. Okay, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 
Three, two, one. All right. Hopefully that was enough time. We hope. Okay. Round two answers. Uh, name that cover. Uh, so these are the two uh, covers of The Amazing Adventures of Cavalier and Clay uh, by Michael Chabon. Won the Pulitzer Prize that year. Okay. And then the bestseller I was looking for was The Dutch House by Ann Patchett. The Dutch House by Ann Patchett. Uh, Mo Willems is the name of the children's book author who created all of those characters. Uh, I was, the Moji book title I was looking for was The Devil in the White City by Eric Larson. Uh, that was a picture of Kevin Kwan. Um, he's most well known for Crazy Rich Asians. Uh, and that was the cast, well, some of the cast of Crazy Rich Asians around him. So Kevin Kwan was who I was looking for. Uh, that was the cast of The Great Gatsby uh, by F. Scott Fitzgerald. Just took away their last names because that was a little too easy. Um, NFBFF. So the author was uh, Rebecca Solnit, and her latest memoir is called uh, Recollection, Recollections excuse me, of My Non-Existence. Uh, the five-word synopsis I was looking for, uh, the novel was The Grapes of Wrath by John Steinbeck. Uh, so these are some, uh, well, these are all, I guess, of the other uh, George Eliot novels. You could have had Adam Bede, The Mill on the Floss, Silas Marner, Romola, Felix Holt, The Radical, and Daniel Deronda. So hopefully you got some of those. And literary before and after was common sense and sensibility. Okay, we are going to keep things trucking and move on to round three. All right, here we go. Round three. So coming up first, number one, we have Name That Cover. This is a novel published in 2014. Um... Just looking for the title of the book and the author, if you know it. You have spent more than five minutes talking with our bookstore manager, Beth. You will have probably heard about this book. Um, so just looking for the title of the book, if you know it, and the author, if you know it. I don't know how well you guys can see everything, but the little badge there says it was a National Book Award finalist, published in 2014, and Bookstore Manager Beth's all-time favorite. Title and author is all we need. Okay, number two, best sellers. This memoir, published on March 10th, debuted at number the number one spot on the New York Times bestseller list, where it currently still sits. This is a quote. In her most revealing and powerful memoir yet, the beloved activist, speaker, and best-selling author of Love Warrior and Carry On Warrior explores the joy and peace we discover when we stop striving to meet expectations of the world and start trusting the voice deep within us. Um, so, super popular book at the moment. Just looking for uh, the author's name, if you know it, and the title of her memoir, if you know it. Um, as far as other hints go, uh, she's married to Abby Wambach, so that's very cool. Title and author is all I need. All right, we're going to move on to number three. Picture this. Uh, first published in 1933, this picture book by Marjorie Flack and Kurt Wise tells the story of the tells the tale, excuse me, of a duck lost on the Yangtze River. In, 20, in 2007, the ALA named it one of their top 100 books for teachers. Uh, so, just looking for the title of the picture book. If you can't quite remember the title, we will just accept the name of the duck. 
So first published in 1933, this picture book by Marjorie Flack and Kurt Wise tells the tale of a duck lost on the Yangtze River. In 2007, the ALA named it one of their top 100 books for teachers. It was also a childhood staple of mine as well. So just looking for the title of the book or the title of the duck. Okay, we're going to move on to number four, emoji book titles. Okay. This book was published in 2005. It was the debut novel of a very, very popular um, young adult author. It was made into a series on Hulu last year. So looking for the title of the book, if you know it, and the author if you know it as well. So published in 2005 uh, as the debut novel of a very, very popular uh, young adult novel. And it was turned into a Hulu series last year. So title will get you a point and the author will get you a point. Okay, and move on to number five. I'm ready for my close-up. Who is this amazing woman? Uh, she was born in 1935. Uh, she passed away last year, 2019, at age 83. Uh, and she is, is the balm we need in these times. Um, just looking for her name, if you know it. We have her in her younger years and her in her older years. Born in 1935, died in 1929 at age 83. Just looking for her name, if you know it. Okay, we're going to move on to number six. What a cast! Gilbert Blythe, Diana Barry, Matthew Cuthbert, and Rachel Lind. Gilbert Blythe, Diana Barry, Matthew Cuthbert, and Rachel Lind. So these are just, just some of the characters of this 1908 novel. Looking for the title of the book, if you know it and the author will snag you another point. Gilbert Blythe, Diana Barry, Matthew Cuthbert, and Rachel Lind. So title and author, gonna move on to number seven, NFBFF. Published in 2010, this National Book Critics Circle Award winner by Isabel Wilkerson tells the story of the Great Migration, or the movement of African Americans out of the southern United States to the Midwest, Northeast, and West from 1915 to 1970. Its title is taken from the Richard Wright poem, Black Boy. Wright himself moved from the South to Chicago in the 1920s. Uh, so it was a nonfiction book published in 2010. Uh, the author's name is Isabel Wilkerson, and it's about the Great Migration. So just looking for the title of the book, if you know it. Okay, this is, this is very weird without any kind of audience feedback, but we're moving along. Number eight, uh, five word synopsis. Hairy footed thief bests dragon. Okay, so this is uh, from a novel. We're looking for a novel from uh, originally published in 1937. Hairy footed thief. Best's Dragon. 
So the title will get you a point and the author will get you a point. Hairy Footed Thief Bests Dragon from 1937. Okay, we're going to move on to number nine, Get Lit. Uh, this 1948 classic novel from South Africa, published the year apartheid began, follows Stephen Kumalo, a 69-year-old Zulu priest who attempts to find his family in Johannesburg and later to reconstruct the dis disintegrating state of his village. The novel explores many themes from the degrading of the land reserved for the natives to the detrimental effects of fear on people and society. It was adapted into a film in 1995 with James Earl Jones playing the lead role. So, a classic novel from South Africa, published in 1948. Looking for the title of the book if you know it. And the author will also get you another point. with James Earl Jones in the title role. All right, moving on to the last question of this round. Number 10, literary before and after. Uh, Twain's 1885 novel set along the Mississippi River meets Joyce's 1939 experimental novel. Looking for a shared word here. Twain's 1885 novel set along the Mississippi River meets Joyce's 1939 experimental novel. Okay, we'll give you all a second here to enter and catch up. That is the end of round three. Please feel free to let me know if you need something repeated and we can go back um, quickly and do that. The author close up. Yes, I would be happy to do that. All right, I have to look back at the hints I gave because I don't want to give extra ones. Um, born in 1935, uh, passed away last year at age 83. Um, she, yep, she's, was a very, very popular author in her field and yeah, just a good person all around looking for her name. And we'll go back to literary before and after it looks like. So Twain's 1885 novel set along the Mississippi River meets Joyce's 1939 experimental novel. So two titles that share a word or part of a word uh, in the middle that can join them together. And it looks like Jamie is updating some scores in the comment field there. So the Mulders are in the lead at the moment. A bunch of people tied for second. Awesome. Okay, we're going to do our countdown here. So get your answers in, everyone. Uh, ten. Oh, second still to discuss, I suppose. Well, well, I'll give you a second. Here we go. <laughs> Hope you guys are doing okay. It's been a weird, weird couple weeks, so hang in there. All right, so 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 
And one. Please get your answers in. We're going to start going over the answers. Hmm. Hmm. I'm now noticing my PowerPoint is kind of cut off on the side, but I don't really know how to fix it, so we're just going to let it go. Okay, round three answers. Name that cover. Uh, so that was the cover of Station Eleven by Emily St. John Mandel. If you have ever talked to Beth, she has probably put it in your hands. A bestseller I was looking for was Untamed by Glennon Doyle. Untamed by Glennon Doyle. Uh, the title of the picture book is The Story About Ping. But if you just wrote Ping, uh, the name of the duck, that will get you a point as well. Uh, the emoji book title I was looking for was Looking for Alaska by John Green. Looking for Alaska by John Green. Uh, those were pictures of Mary Oliver, the best poet ever, maybe. Um, that was um, some characters from Anne of Green Gables by L.M. Montgomery. Uh, the nonfiction book I was looking for was The Warmth of Other Suns, The Warmth of Other Suns by Isabel Wilkerson. That was a five-word synopsis of The Hobbit by J.R.R. Tolkien. Um, the classic work of literature I was looking for is Cry the Beloved Country by Alan Patton from South Africa. And the literary before and after was The Adventures of Huckleberry Finnegan's Wake. The Adventures of Huckleberry Finnegan's Wake. So tricky. So very tricky. All right. The last two rounds, we're going to ramp up in difficulty. Hopefully it's not too much for most of you guys, but we're gonna we're gonna do it anyways. So round four, here we go. Uh, number one, name that cover. Name that cover. Uh, so this won the Man Booker Prize. Um, it was published in two thousand nine. Two thousand nine. So looking for the title of the book, if you know it, and the author's name, if you know it. It was part of a trilogy, um, the final book of which just came out a couple weeks ago as well. Well, this book that we're looking at came out in 2009, and I need the title and the author, if you know it. All right, we're gonna move on to number two, best sellers. Uh, this author's latest instant New York Times bestseller, The House of Earth and Blood, is the first in her Crescent City series for adults. Uh, she is most famous for her two young adult fantasy series, Throne of Glass, and A Court of Thorns and Roses. So just looking for the author's name, if you know it. So she just published her first novel for adults that sound like hotcakes. Uh, she's most famous for her two YA fantasy series, Throne of Glass and A Court of Thro Thorns and Roses. Just need her name, if you know it. Okay, we're going to move on to number three. Picture this. In this 1981 Caldecott winning picture book by Chris Van Alsberg, Judy and Peter find a discarded board game at the park that warns, do not begin unless you intend to finish. In 1995, it was turned into a smash film starring Robin Williams. So I've already given you the author and illustrator just looking for the title of the book, if you know it, which is also the title of the film. So 
So just need the title of this 1981 picture book. Okay, we're gonna move on to number four, emoji book titles. Uh, so this is a book published in 1937. 1937. Just looking for the title of the book, if you know it, and the author will get you a point as well. So kind of a classic of American fiction. Just need the title and the author from 1937. Okay, we're going to move on to number five. I'm ready for my close-up. Who is this man? He may look scary, but he's great. Um, he was born in 1930. He passed away at age 68 in 1999. He's most famous for his children's literature and poetry. Just looking for his name, if you know it. Born in 1930, uh, died 1999 at age 68. Most famous for children's literature and children's poetry. Just looking for his name, if you know it. He is a hunk of burning love. Okay, moving on to number six. What a cast! Setha. Baby Suggs, Denver, Paul D. Setha, Baby Suggs, Denver, and Paul D. So these are characters um, from a novel published by a very famous American author. Uh, the book came out in 1987, and it won the Pulitzer Prize for Fiction in that year. So Setha, Baby Suggs, Denver, and Paul D. So what novel do these characters belong to? And you can get a point for the author as well. I have to cough. <coughs> so title and author, if you know it. Okay, we're gonna move on to question seven. NFBFF, uh, one of America's most popular historians, this two-time Pulitzer Prize winner has also been awarded the National Book Award and the Presidential Medal of Freedom. Some of his works include Truman, John Adams, 1776, The American Spirit, and last year he published The Pioneers. So I'm just looking for this man's name, if you know it. Um, he was born in 1933, if that helps. Uh, he's 86 years young. Just looking for his name. All right, we're gonna move on to question eight, five word synopsis. Spoiled heroine matchmakes, misconstrues love. So, spoiled heroine matchmakes, misconstrues love. This is from a novel, The Regency Era, published in 1815. Spoiled heroine matchmakes, misconstrues love. Just looking for the title of the book, if you know it and the author as well. Okay, we're gonna move on to question nine. Get lit. An early classic of anti-war literature, this 1929 novel describes Paul Baumer, and other German soldiers' extreme physical and mental stress during World War I, and the deta detachment from civilian life felt by many of these soldiers upon returning home from the front. 
It was one of the many books placed on the ban and burn list when Nazis came to power in Germany. So a classic uh, German novel from 1929, following Paul Baumer and other German soldiers and their experiences during World War I. Looking for the title of the book, if you know it, and the author's name, if you know it. All right, we're going to move on to the last question of round four. Literary before and after. Sun Tzu's 5th century BCE military treatise meets 1869 Tolstoy classic, considered a pillar of world literature. So Sun Tzu's 5th century BCE military treatise meets 1869 Tolstoy classic, considered a pillar of world literature. So two titles that share a word. Can you puzzle it out? You can. I believe in you. All right. And that is the end of round four. You're all doing great. I think. I believe in you. Um, just let me know if you need something repeated, and we can go back and do that quickly. Uh, in the meantime, uh, the rest of you can get your answers in. A-S-A-A-A-P. And we will keep going. All right. Not seeing any calls for repeating so far. So I'm just going to do my good old countdown here. And we'll get back to it. So 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, Three. Oh, number five. Okay, <laughs> we'll go back real quick. Uh, all right, what did I say about this author photo? Okay, besides the fact that he's a hunk of burning love, he is most famous for his children's literature and poetry. Born in 1930, passed away in 1999. All right, and then NFBFF, uh, so a very popular American historian. These are some of the books he's written. Truman, John Adams, 1776, The American Spirit. Uh, last year, he published The Pioneers. Um, so just looking for his name. I guess I should show you. Hmm, I don't know why. Oh, there we go. I forgot to, like mute my camera. So hopefully me reading it to you was nice, except for probably the picture. So that is the picture I was looking for. So yeah, children's author, wrote a lot of kids poetry. Killer Beard. Okay, we're gonna move on and we'll start our countdown again. So 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Hooray! You're all great. Here we go. Round four answers. Uh, name that cover. Uh, that was the cover of Wolf Hall by uh, Hilary Mantel. And the, her most recent book, Mirror in the Light, concludes the trilogy. Just started with this one. Um, the author's name I was looking for was Sarah J. Mass. Very, very popular young adult author. Uh, the picture book I was looking for was Jumanji. Uh, emoji book titles, Their Eyes Were Watching God by Zora Neale Hurston was the book I was looking for. Uh, that was a picture of Shel Silverstein of The Giving Tree and Where the Sidewalk Ends. Shel Silverstein. Uh, those were characters from Beloved 
by Toni Morrison in What a Cast. Uh, the nonfiction writer I was looking for was David McCullough. David McCullough is the historian. Uh, the five-word synopsis was of Emma by Jane Austen. Emma by Jane Austen. Uh, the work of classic literature I was looking for was All Quiet on the Western Front by Enrique Maria Remarque. Remarque? I'm not sure. Sorry. Uh, and literary before and after, The Art of War and Peace. The Art of War and Peace. Good job, one and all. All right, here we go. It is the final round. You've all been doing great. This, my friends, is where the rubber meets the road. Round five. Number one, name that cover. Uh, so this is a book published in 2011. It was the author's debut novel. Um, so looking for the, its title and the author's name, if you know it. Uh, it won the Orange Prize for fiction. If you can't see that little badge. Um, her second novel um, has become a huge uh, bestseller, book club favorite. And it's been in hardcover for over two years. We're not looking for that one. We're looking for the title of her debut, which is what's pictured here. So looking for the title of the book, if you know it, and the author's name. Okay. Moving on to... Yes, her second novel is amazing. I agree, shy one, Persephone. I might prefer this one, though. Number two, best sellers. All right, round five is hard. So what is the best book you've read so far this year? It doesn't have to be published from this year. There's no wrong answers. Um, unless, you, unless you write Atlas Shrugged, then you'll get it wrong. But um, otherwise, what is the best book you've read so far this year? I'd like to know. Thank you. Number three, picture this. This 2015 picture book by Matt De La Pena and illustrated by Christian Robinson follows a young boy named CJ as he learns to appreciate the beauty of everyday things during a bus ride. It won the Newbery, Heretica Scott King Award, and the Caldecott Award. So I've given you the author and illustrator just an uh, image from it, just looking for the title of the picture book, if you know it, from 2015. So when every award a picture book can win, it's very, very good. Just looking for its title. All right, moving on to number four, emoji book titles. So looking for the name of this work. It was first published in 1880, 1855, excuse me, 1855. So just looking for the title, if you know it, and the author's name, if you know it. You kind of... Re Relentlessly revised this work throughout his entire life, but its first form appeared in 1855. Just looking for the title and author. And it looks like Jamie is publishing round three scores. I probably need to slow down for her sake. And the Molders still still killing it with 45. But our emoji here, just looking for the title of the work, if you know it, and the author, if you know it. Okay, we're going to move on to round five. I mean, not round five, we're in round five, question five. 
All right, who is this woman? She was born in 1987. She is 33 years old, uh, and her debut novel released very recently on December 31st, 2019. That is currently on the New York Times bestseller list. It was a Reese Witherspoon book club pick. Um, yeah, and if you've read the book or know anything about it, I guess the fact that she's standing in a grocery store in this picture could be a hint. But I'm not looking for the title of the book. I'm just looking for the name of this woman, if you know it. So born in 1987, her debut novel released on December 31st of 2019. It's currently a bestseller. And it was also a Reese Witherspoon book club pick. Just looking for her name. Okay, we're going to move on to question six. What a cast! Here we go. Hazel, General Woundwort, Fiverr, Kahar, Bigwig, Silver, Blackberry, Pipkin, Holly, and Frith. So these are all characters' names in a very popular 1972 English novel, as in from England, but also in English. So Hazel, General Woundwort, Fiverr, Kahar, Bigwig, Silver, Blackberry, Pipkin, Holly, and Frith. So looking for the title of the work, if you know it, and the author will get you another point. All of these characters, what are they from? From 1972. Okay, we're gonna move on to question seven. NFBFF. In 2012, Catherine Boo published this National Book Award winning work of nonfiction, subtitled Life, Death, and Hope. In the Mumbai Undercity, it has consistently been a book club favorite since its publication. So, 2012 work of nonfiction, subtitled Life, Death, and Hope in a Mumbai Undercity. Uh, won the National Book Award for nonfiction that year. It was on the New York Times, like, top 10 books of the year. Um, and it's been a pretty consistent book club favorite since then. So I've given you the author's name and the subtitle, but can you remember the title title? Catherine Boo. All right, we're going to move on to question eight. Five word synopsis. Cheeky monkey meets millinery man. Cheeky monkey meets millinery man. So this is a character who first appeared in 1939. So just looking for his title and the author's name is if you know it. Cheeky Monkey Meets Millinery Man. So the character first appeared in 1939. For his name and the author's names, if you know it. If you don't know the author's first names, that's fine. Last name is what we care about. Yes, millinery means a hat, like hat-making man.
Cheeky Monkey meets Millinery Man. All right, moving on to number nine. Get way up. This 1966 novel by Japanese author Susaku Endo tells the story of a Jesuit missionary sent to 17th century Japan who endures harsh persecution. It received, excuse me, it received the Tanazaki Prize, one of Japan's highest literary prizes, and in 2016 it was adapted into a film of the same name starring Martin Scorsese, I mean, sorry, directed by Martin Scorsese, starring Andrew Garfield, Adam Driver, and Liam Neeson. So, 1966 Japanese novel by Endo um, was adapted into a film in 2016 by Martin Scorsese, starring Andrew Garfield, Adam Driver, and Liam Neeson. Just looking for the title of the book, which is also the title of the film. If you've read it or if you have seen it. Okay, everyone, here we are. The last question of the quiz. Number 10, literary before and after. Uh, John Paul Sartre's 1990... That can't be right. That date is wrong. Sorry, don't look at that date. Um, John Paul Sartre's existential play about three souls stuck together in the afterlife meets Moshin Hamid's 19... 2017 novel about a young couple, Saeed and Nadia, who live in an unnamed city, undergoing civil war, and finally having to flee using a system of magical doors. If you will hold for a moment, I will find out when John Paul Sartre's play actually came out. 1944. I knew that was wrong. The 1944 existential play about three souls stuck together in the afterlife meets Moshin Hamid's 2017 novel about a young couple, Saeed and Nadia, who live in an unnamed city undergoing civil war and finally having to flee using a system of magical doors. Yeah, I spelled milk. All right, wrong. Sorry. All of my mistakes are coming to the surface. Um, okay. So Jamie's updating the round four totals there. Um, so if you guys want to have any repeated, just let me know and I can go back and do that. Um, picture book. You got it. Let's go back. Uh, so this is a 2015 picture book uh, by Bat De La Pena, illustrated by Christian Robinson. So those are the two authors. Uh, just looking for the title of the picture book, if you know it. It's all about CJ on a bus ride, learning to see everyday things and appreciate them. And we'll go back to the book cover. Oops. All right, so what did I say about this? This is a debut novel published in 2011. Uh, her second novel um, has been, been very, very popular. Um, it has been in hardcover for over two years, and it is a big book club at Fave. But that's her second novel. This is the cover of her first novel. Looking for the title of this one and the author as well, if you know it. Okay. So we're going to see if anyone else needs anything repeated. If not, we'll do our little countdown here. Oh, 
nonfiction question. Okay, we'll go back. All right, so uh, this is a book published in 2012. Uh, the author's name is Catherine Boo. It won the National Book Award for Nonfiction, and it's subtitled Life, Death, and Hope in a Mumbai Undercity. It has been a pretty popular um, favorite in the book club rotation since publication. So just looking for its title. Okay. Oops. So before we go over answers, sorry, I need to do our little countdown here. So, all right, so you have 10, to the count of 10 to get your books in. So answers, that is 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, and 1. All right, awesome. Thank you all. All right, so we're going to go over round five answers. Um, and then while Jamie's grading, I'll try to get by her a little time, update you on some stuff that's going on at Bookmarks in the next few days and weeks, and then we'll see who won the whole kit and caboodle here. Um, for everyone that signed up to play tonight, just as a thank you, um, we're going to be sending out either probably tomorrow uh, like a coupon code that you can use online to purchase um, to, towards a purchase. Um, we're still able to do um, shipping uh, for online orders under the current restrictions, so we would love to um, get you guys books any way we can. Okay, so we're gonna go over answers. All right, so round five answers. All right, name that cover. Uh, so that was the cover of The Song of Achilles by Madeline Miller. Um, her second book, Circe, has been very, very popular and a huge, it's a, it's a great, they're both great, they're both amazing. Um, but we're looking for The Song of Achilles by Madeline Miller. Um, so everyone gets a point um, for a book that you liked. I look forward to seeing all of them when I look at the answers later. Um, I've really loved a book called How Much of These Hills is Gold. Uh, it actually comes out on the 7th of April. And I'll probably talk about it here a little bit in a second, but it is far and away uh, the best novel I've read this year. And I can't imagine anything beating it. So check it out. Uh, that was from the picture book, The Last Stop on Market Street. Last Stop on Market Street was the picture book that we were looking for. Uh, the emoji book title I was looking for was Leaves of Grass by Walt Whitman. Leaves of Grass by Walt Whitman. Uh, that was a picture of Kylie Reed. So Kylie Reed published uh, Such a Fun Age is the name of her novel. It is very popular nowadays. So Such a Fun Age is the name of her book, but we were looking for her name, and her name is Kylie Reed. Uh, the, the cast that we had listed there were all rabbits uh, from Watership Down by Richard Adams. Watership Down by Richard Adams. Uh, NF, BFF, uh, Behind the Beautiful Forevers. Behind the Beautiful Forevers is the name of Catherine Boo's book about uh, people living in the slums of Mumbai. And that was a five-word synopsis of... The Character of Curious George um, by H.A. and Margaret Ray. If you just had Ray as the author, that's fine. Uh, and Silence is the name of the Japanese novel that I was looking for. Uh, it's also this, uh, the name of the movie as well. And finally, the literary before and after is No Exit West. No Exit West. 
So no exit is the play, and exit west is the novel. No exit west. All right. So that is it. Um, we're going to be doing this again, hopefully on the 27th. Um, it's probably going to be online, but stay tuned uh, for that. We really appreciate you guys playing with us. Um, you're more than welcome to duck out of the stream now if you want. If you want to hang around for a little bit, I have some quick announcements to make about things happening at Bookmarks and some recommendations. And we'll probably, we'll, we'll also post this um, stream on, oops, on Netflix, uh, not Netflix, goodness gracious, on YouTube as well. I wish Netflix um, on YouTube as well so people could, uh, you can share it around and people can watch and play at home if they want. Um, so while Jamie is grading your round five answers and we're waiting for the final scores, I just want to let you guys know a few things that are happening. Um, if you don't already, please like sign up for our newsletter on our website. Um, follow us on social, uh, Instagram, Facebook, the platform of your choice. Um, on April 2nd, so coming up at 12 p.m., uh, we're going to be doing a live cooking demo with uh, cookbook author uh, Sandra Gutierrez. So she's going to be broadcasting from her home, um, teaching us all how to cook while we're all stuck at home. Very, very useful. Um, on April 7th uh, at 7 p.m., this is an event we've done before, but we're going to do it um, digitally online this time. It is uh, called Insight 321. So basically, um, myself, some other booksellers, we get together and we tell you um, three like books that you can pre-order that we're really excited about, um, two new releases that we love, and then a backlist title that we really, really enjoy. So if you're looking for recommendations, it's a great way to do that. Ooh, Jamie's announcing scores. Very cool. All right, so everyone, like I said, everyone will get a link. We'll reach out to um, like the, the top teams and we'll, we'll send some prizes your way. Um, book clubs are also moving online at Bookmarks. So if you've attended the Bookmarks Book Club or a Book Buzz Book Club or the Romance Book Club, those are all still happening. Um, and you're welcome to join us for an online discussion if you'd like to do that. Um, and finally, on April 10th, uh, Kyle Webster will be hosting uh, like a, a Tracing Workshop, he's an illustrator, and that's gonna be a lot of fun as well. All that info is on our website, so if you wanna check it out, that would be great. Um, so congratulations to, oh, and Neil Shubin, who we were gonna have an event with, uh, will be on Inside the Writer Studio, Charlie Lovett's podcast on April 1st. Good to know, thank you, Charlie. All right, so thank you all for playing. Um, you've been great, thank you for Bearing with me while I fiddled with technology on my end. It'll be so smooth next time. Unless it's in person, then it'll just, it'll be the hot mess that it always is. All right. Love you all. Have a good night. Bye.